you know, you're able to, in, literally, you're able to track the person in that car by their clothes across the city using various cameras. And you think, what is the purpose of, of the government having this kind of information? And if it's very targeted, right, if you're looking at somebody who is independent of that surveillance, suspected of committing, you know, of being a danger to society, that's one thing. But that's typically not how surveillance gets used. And in fact, when it comes to crime, surveillance in most instances is, you know, it's sort of, it's responsive to what happens. You can see what happened. It doesn't necessarily stop it. And study after study has shown that any uh, increase in public safety that accompanies uh, surveillance eventually wanes, right? And eventually people get used to being viewed. It doesn't change their behavior, but what it does do is enable the government to uh, keep an eye on citizens when they're not doing anything wrong, which is particularly problematic in a society, for example, in a city like Detroit, uh, which is where I am, which has been for decades a, um, a, a real hub for union activity, for religious and ethnic minorities fighting for civil rights. And history has shown us, if nothing else, that the government will ultimately abuse this ability. In the United States, there are programs, COINTELPRO, the Ghetto Informant Program, the surveillance of Muslims in the aftermath of 9-11. Uh, in Baltimore, there were protests over the death of a, a black man named Freddie Gray in police custody, and the police used facial recognition software to identify protesters in the crowd who had outstanding warrants for things that weren't necessarily serious, right? You know, it could be anything from jaywalking to you know, driving without insurance, and then we're able to go out there in the crowd and arrest those people. You're talking about a chilling effect on, you know, sort of otherwise lawful protest, and that's problematic. Uh, the and in America, most of our rights were our rights to be secure in our persons and possession are predicated upon rules that were created long ago. We really don't have any guardrails to keep um, to keep government surveillance, the kind we have now, in check. It used to be you knew the police couldn't watch everyone all the time, all at once, right? That's actually not true anymore, and we don't have rules to govern that kind of surveillance. We don't have the normal kind of constitutional protections uh, that we're accustomed to 